You are listening to Stepping from Stone to Stone, a podcast devoted to discussing Combat Silat, also known as Pinjak Silat Pertemporan, as well as the underlying themes, principles, and concepts behind all combat. Welcome to another episode of Stepping from Stone to Stone. Let's get right into it. We had talked Guru last time about learning methodologies um, and teaching methodologies. And then uh, when we got into everything before the podcast, before I actually started recording, we were kind of in a, the middle of an interesting conversation about how to look at that from a student's perspective as well. And, you know, what makes a great student um, in addition to what makes a great teacher. So uh, you want to start with the the learning methodologies that we actually talked about doing in the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Um, for one of the things that I try to do in teaching, I mean, I'm not going to be able to give you the professional, you know, terms. Yeah, the way that I teach is pretty much the way that I do everything. It's a little bit. Uh, gut feel it's a little bit learning and it's a little bit watching and screwing up and then changing and doing it again and figuring it out um and so i don't have a lot of the you know terminology that you might find from an education professional like um bill for example but um i can tell you what i see and what i think works based on the years of teaching so um you know psp one of the things that attracted me to Pomor is this sort of uh, organization of it, right? Because I, one of the things for me that has always been a little bit um, hard about uh, Sila is it's generally, anyway, tends to be pretty organic. You don't really get a lot of structure, and um, or at least on the surface, it's not apparent. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more show me and a little bit less tell me, and um, and that's because of the culture it comes from. And so that's all cool, but I'm very much a combination learner. I have to. Are you gonna make it? Yeah, <laughs> I'm living. I, <laughs> I have to have um, a bit of intellectual connection to what I'm doing in order to understand it and um, in, in a way that I can maintain it and remember it. Like that is a primary thing for me. Taking notes, for example, is one of the things I used to do. I just had this discussion actually with my ninjutsu teacher. Uh, like I'll take notes um, about stuff and I'll just by being able to uh, spell out, for example, um, uh, Indonesian or Japanese words, I'll be able to remember them s substantially better because I'll, I'll have a context for the sounds that I'm hearing. And um, it also, for some reason, just seems to work for my memory. So I'll take notes, but I may never look at them again, and it won't matter. You know, I'll go back. Uh, I think some of the more I have notebooks on Pomora and Sirach and Sterlock and, and Garote and, and all that. And, you know, occasionally I'll go back. When I haven't done things for, like, a jillion years, um, <laughs> I'll go back and I'll look at it. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember exactly what that is. And it's funny to me because I'm now just reading it, but mechanically I still know how to do it because I've read it, uh, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it has to do with repetition and doing it and all that stuff. Um, but there's there's something else there that seems to work for me. So when I stumbled upon Pomor, and I, I don't really believe in the word stumbling in this case, uh, it really it feels a little bit more divinely interesting than that. Um, but I started studying Pomor, and it was pretty damn well organized. Like, it was probably the most organized CLS system I had ever seen up to that point. Um, very categorized, you know, these are the things you're going to do, and this is what it fits in this category, and, you know, your allus, there's 12 different allus, you know, but it's really 12 categories of allus, and then there's, you know, 1A, 1B, 1C, and um, and so you you really got to have a uh, 
deeper understanding, I think, a little quicker because you had this definition that existed and it helped you to sort through it. And so I carried that over into PSP. That is basically how PSP is set up. Um, But then as I taught for the first 10 years or so of teaching PSP publicly, what I discovered is that um, it wasn't quite... Uh, it helped people to understand those bits and pieces, but it didn't help them to understand necessarily how the bits and pieces fit together very well. And so, I mean, I would say that I'm probably on PSP 3.1 or something right now. (laughs) Uh, um, But it isn't so much the material that's changed. There are some changes in material. Usually, like we talked about earlier in one of the podcasts, it's more about reduction of material. But um, uh, it's been more about uh, finding methods that work for people to learn uh, faster, really. At the end of the day, my goal is to try to help somebody have skills the first day they come to class. Now, obviously, those skills are not going to be very deep. They're not going to uphold um, to heavy pressure or anything like that. But I wanted people to be able to contextualize the material they were learning to help them today. And so, you know, the more the more recent versions of PSP and the way that I teach now are set up to, you know, show how the bits and pieces that used to be separated by categories, and and they still are. Um, verbally, but they're more set up now so that they're a stream. I, I use the term stream quite a bit. Uh, it's a stream of technique. Uh, and the idea there is that I recognize there was not enough flow in earlier iterations and only, um, only certain students were able to pick up on what I was trying to do. So in an effort to sort of broaden that, I had to look at the framework and I'd and you know, it's in a process I took lightly because I don't like, I don't, I don't want to change just to change. So I started uh, reframing PSP's learning methodology by seeing where I thought um, most people that trained with me struggled the most, and then seeing where it fit with my goals of the system you know the manifesto that i wrote is a is a written um version of the things that i think are most important for psp practitioners to understand and so if i if i compare what i'm actually doing to the manifesto and see the results it can guide me pretty easily into the next most logical you know changes that I need to make to fit things. Uh, Results are always the bottom line. I I want the system to be practical. I want it to be accessible. And I want it to be attainable for people. So, And that means attainable for as many people as possible. It will never fit everybody. I don't care. That's cool. Uh, If it fit everybody, it would suck. That's really (laughs) the bottom line. It would suck. And so... So I'm really, you know, PSP to me, the the learning methodologies are I want you to be able to categorically understand things, to be able to contextualize them and communicate about them, and then I want you to be able to demonstrate them. And uh, so the approach that I use, uh, I think, does that pretty well right now. So, Yeah, that's been interesting, the... That approach has been interesting to me from two fronts. You know, one is a student um, kind of exploring the idea of adaptability, yeah, um, and being able to adapt quickly and on the fly. Um, it it's kind of informed a lot of the other martial arts that I've looked at as well because I learned because of the way PSP is organized. I've learned to be able to kind of put something in, into this mental framework that I, I have and it's, Oh, that fits here. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and being able to kind of recognize techniques out in the wild and even stuff that, you know, has nothing to do with PSP or, um, 
Martial arts even always. Well, yeah, martial arts or, or even like, you know, the body culture differences between Indonesia as filtered through a corn fed northerner, your, you know, yourself. Um, oh, and <laughs> I dare because you don't pay for that. The yeah. next time. <laughs> but, um, you know, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Hapkido. Yeah. You know, I have friends who are come from a, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu background. I have friends that are deeply steeped in a Hapkido background all along that continuum, all the way from, you know, starch white geese in Korean, um, the Korean side of things to, you know, wearing a ball cap and a baggy shirt to cover your gun and a pair of jeans and, you know, still doing Hapkido wrist locks and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but being able to see, you know, stuff that they're doing and, and kind of contextualize it for myself has been interesting and also a really a benefit. And the other part has been, uh, you know, the, the second part where it's been interesting is teaching people who do come from a, a traditional martial arts background where when presented with a problem, this is the right answer to that problem. Right. Right. Uh, and then, you know, I'll, I'll have guys, you know, once again, who are, let's say, from a, a BJJ background, well, can I do this choke here? I don't know. Can you? Well, yeah, yeah it, it flows really easily from here. Well, dude, that that's not the way my brain approaches movement. But if you're pulling that off and, oh, he's tapping, I, I guess that was a good choke, you know, yeah. <laughs> more power to you it, versus, you know, we'll have somebody else in the same class who's a boxer. He's like, dude, that's that's not where you choke. That's where you uppercut the fuck out of that guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like actually yeah. knock his head off of his shoulders you're in position for it just do it yeah and it's like okay well if that's what if that's your answer to that movement pattern then that's awesome you know show me on him how you knock somebody's head off their shoulders (laughs) yeah and and that's been the beauty to me because you know i talk about psp being personal and people who aren't involved you know they don't necessarily get that i don't think that's any kind of a secret thing but you you could literally be a boxer and do combat sea lot. You could you could literally, you know, do kung fu ish. You know what I mean? It's it's it is simple enough as a framework that you can easily personalize it to your style of combat. I I am not I'm more of I'm gonna more hit you and kick you and that's pretty much my skill. That's what I like to do. Um, I'm not as comfortable dropping to the ground, but a, we have that. If you're into that, as and as you know, we have people who love that side. Um, I teach it from the standpoint of I need to be able to get up. I need to be able to defend myself while I'm getting up. And after that, I don't really care too much about it. But, um, you know, there are people who enjoy the hell out of that. And more power to them. They have the room to do it. So... PSP gives you like the way that it's set up, you know, you can, you can really customize it to your personal preferences and still be challenged, you know, to do, to expand those and to do other things, which is cool. Yeah. That's, um, one of the things that it's an ongoing conversation between my roommate and I, he's, he's more into the, um, the side of things of, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and grappling, and I mean, he loves it. Yeah. Um, and we, we've talked about being kind of a one trick pony, and it's it's really good if that's your one trick, right? And yeah. you can always make the fight about that. Um, I won't mention any UFC fights that happened this weekend, but that there's a fighter who got her butt whooped, and it was a one trick. She's a one trick deal. She yeah. had business trying to box she's not a boxer yet well and, and her her one trick is fairly amazing um, yeah, she's damn good at it she's, yeah <laughs> like if, if if at any point that fight becomes about her arm bar um you're gonna get shit dislocated if you don't tap yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. but um you know even seeing some of the the boxing and stuff that you know we're talking about the ronda rousey fight for people what? that hey. <laughs> that live under a, a rock um, and are going to see this or listen to it far in the future. Um, but her you know, second one. Yeah. Seeing, uh, seeing the fight that she was uh, in and, and watching her try to do some of the basic boxer head movements and Paul Perry's and everything. 
Um, it was terrible. Without any, without any guard. Yeah, it was, it was horrific. Way um, too shadow boxing and not enough actual boxing. Yeah. Well, and I think, you, you know, you, you put something up on the, the private PSP group and I, I think it, it's worth mentioning here. You know, when you have that as a student, you know, I want to, to realize what I'm good at. Yeah. So I'm fair to middling at choking people from a personal, <laughs> yeah. um, from a, a personal perspective. Oh, yes. Um, and I'm, I have above average weapons handling stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I live, uh, with a gun in my pants. Um, and no, I'm not talking about anything, uh, <laughs> <laughs> any, any, anything that would be easy to make a joke about, but you know, I, it's just normal to me that I get up in the morning and my belt and my knives go on and my gun goes on. Yeah. And that's, that's as much a part of getting dressed for me as other people putting on their sneakers. Right. Um, so realizing that, it, you know, it makes more sense to me to make those skill sets as awesome as possible. Um, but also try to develop set points and recognition points where if somebody brings me outside of those skill sets, I can get back to them. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, so, so you know, the concept of being a good student, right, is, is also – partly related to the system itself you know you you can be a fantastic student but if the system is too large for you to get any redundancy in your training um you're going to always struggle to find those places right those set points and those things that you can go back to where you know psp doesn't cover every possible relationship we don't cover every um you know, conceivable option. We cover as few as possible and we do them over and over and over in a myriad of ways. And that's really conceptually different than the majority of martial arts out there. And they, and it isn't, you know, they're not wrong necessarily. Um, but I find for myself anyway that I need less options and I need more practice. And uh, I need that then to be able to translate to how I use my pistol and how I use my um, baton or my knife or how I grapple or how I um, box or whatever. And so, you know, that's again, part of the learning methodology component, but it's also part, um, part of what it means to be a student is to not be looking so much for more as to figure out how do I, how do I do this with what I have? And, you know, most of the time, I don't find that I need to vary from PSP. I really just need to expand how I view the material that's already there. Um, and uh, I almost always find the answer, you know. There, sometimes it takes years. Literally, uh, there was a – I was practicing knife um, pretty steady uh, – for a long time and I just had this one sort of struggle I was just trying to like how do I deal with this you know because there's different grips and changing and all that stuff you know and it took a long long time probably like I said almost two years maybe before I found a solution that fit within the PSP framework didn't require me to alter anything and um, allowed me to expand my base uh, without adding material necessarily, you know, and uh, so that's it's very possible and it's a good process for you. But you have to, as a student, you have to want, you have to want that. And, you know, I can't give you every possible thing because you got <laughs> you would have to figure out how to first ask the question, and sometimes you don't even always know what the question is. Yeah, you know. Well, and. I've noticed that a couple of times training with you and training with others um, over the years. Sometimes people are giving me the answer to a question that I'm not ready to <laughs> hear yet. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, this is the best thing ever. I'm like, oh, I, okay. So you can obviously kick my ass. So I'll agree with you. Um, yeah. But what does that mean to me? Well, it doesn't mean yeah. anything to me. Oh, yeah. Well, that kind of sucks then. Um, and, 
you know, I I think mentioning that that long term conversation we've I I've had with my roommate. You know, when he gets me on the ground, I'm kind of like fish out of water. Um, yeah. I don't deal with those pressures. I don't deal with those leverage points on a regular basis. Right. Um, whereas it, when you get somebody who's, you know, that's their bread and butter and they'll, they're going to spend two hours per class, however many times a week working specifically on the ground, you know, he's got me. Yeah. Um, but the, the principles of movement haven't changed. Like he hasn't grown any extra limbs or had any taken away from him <laughs> by us being on the ground. Yeah. Um, and we're, you know, we both have similar physical attributes and we're trying to open up a can of whoop ass on each other. And we're at the bottom of a gravity. Well, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. not, not, nothing in physics has changed just the way he's applying it. So it's right. been kind of an interesting, um, journey for me um and you know we we run into the same stuff for him um you know you and i have talked a little bit about appendix carry and and centerline access for blades and and things like that um you know when i was first talking to my to my roommate he's like well you know i want to do strong side hip why well that's that's what everybody does okay well you know try to grapple me out of getting a hold of my gun or my knife yeah. Well, damn, that's hard. Well, I'm, yeah. <laughs> let's do it a couple more times. I'm enjoying stabbing you with these trainers. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, it 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 is very much a, a journey and a process, both on um, his side and mine. So, yeah. You know, I, I guess the from what you're saying, and, and correct me if I'm misunderstanding these or this. You know, the the teaching methodology in, in PSP is just repeatedly hammering a few really simple um, interpretations of principles until the student gets how to apply them in a a broad variety of circumstances. Yeah, I mean, uh, principles, movements, uh, relationships, relationships the way we refer to them are, you know, positions that you might find yourself in with an attacker. So whatever that... um, uh, whatever you can explore with those, uh, I hope we are mostly covering, you know. And uh, like I said, there's not, there's, you know, the, the beauty of PSP2 is that we still have um, a, a bigger room even than, a bigger house maybe is a better way to say it, than the room that we're working in. The room that we're working in is is just to define the starting point. Mm-hmm. to help you start to grow yourself, to help you find a baseline of skill um, that you can apply. Now, I don't find that I have to go too far beyond that uh, most of the time, um, just because the complexity of things in in uh, combative uh, situations isn't really that high most of the time. Like, you don't need intricate stuff for the most part. So I don't I don't find that I have to go beyond it too much, but every once in a while I like to play and I like to expand, um, you know, what I do a little bit. But it's more personalized that way. It's not I'm not teaching that. That's just what I'm doing for myself. Um, I don't, uh, for example, really coach people in using double go lock, but I use double go lock personally. You know, I don't teach people to use staff because I don't really find it all that common. Um, but you want to pick up a bat, now we're having a conversation. I'll, I'll teach you how to use a bat, a baseball bat, or a, or a piece of pipe, or a chain, or a rope. You know, I like to use a whip, but whip is, you know, a little bit more traditional weapon. But I, I don't think about it as just popping and cracking and hitting. I think about it as, you know, what happens if I hold on to the popping and cracking in and bust your head with the handle? Oh, that's fantastic, you know. <laughs> Uh, how do I choke you out with it? How do I wrap up your limbs with it? You know, and not to get too sidetracked on some of that stuff, but you know, that's a personal expression process based still on the foundations of you know what we've already been studying. So, you know, when we get into weapons in PSP, for example, you know, everybody's required to sort of 
tell me how to use their weapon. Um, I don't, I teach based on guidelines at that point because you're at a level where in PSP uh, weapons are taught primarily last. The foundation is laid throughout the whole process, but it's the last thing we really get into. And um, at that point, I expect you to show me and be able to argue what you're doing, you know, rather than me tell you everything to do. That would be stupid. Yeah, and that's that speaks, you know, once again to some other stuff that we've talked about, which is um, maintain the most efficiency in training time. None of yeah. us are, are full con- or uh, full time martial artists. Yeah. Um, so everything I do, um, you know, has to bring with it efficiency. Otherwise, I'm, you know, just chasing. Oh, these are my staff techniques. These are my knife techniques. You know, versus. Okay. These are my general techniques, and I adapt it this way when I have a staff in my hands versus this way when I have a a whip in my hands. Um, you posted up a couple of uh, whip videos on the the public YouTube channel for PSP, um, yeah. And I've I've done a little bit of playing with uh, some of the principles with the gun belt that I wear. Uh, and interesting. It's it's completely different. You know, you've got that little piece of thin whip, and I've got uh, double ply thick yeah. steer hide um, yeah. that's about a quarter inch thick yeah. um, and then a, a buckle that's uh, I haven't weighed it but we'll just say it's hefty yeah. uh, so I, you know I might not have that satisfying popping noise but I'm I feel pretty good about hitting somebody with that buckle yeah um, as when you not me <laughs> you and I have talked about using um, you know I use bandana and I'll put you know, quarters in it. That's my, that's my airline carry. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's different, but it's the same premise again. And those kind of, you know, to me, that's the experiential side of it, right? You personalize PSP every time you play it because everybody's slightly different anyway. But, uh, the challenge is always like, okay, so you're doing this thing how do you how do you get from point A to point B while using the framework that we use? Because it isn't that oh well, I, there's no answer for this, so I'm just going to skip it. I'm not going to do it, or I'm going to add something. That's where you are as a student, either going to rise or you're going to fall, right? Because I'm not going to give you all the answers. I'm going to guide you in how to think, and then we're going to work on exploring that together until you're able to find that expression. Well, and I think that kind of touches on, you know, what could be a nice segue into how a student learns and, and becoming a, a best student. You know, we, we've talked about the, the teaching methodologies. Yeah. Um, you know, the learning methodologies to me, um, there's, there's two things that I've used. One is um, I call it running towards discomfort. Um, so there's things that I hate doing and I I found that regardless of what martial art I'm studying or, you know, what I'm, any kind of physical skill or, or skill in general that I'm learning, there's things that beginners all hate doing. Um, you know, when I was studying piano, um, I almost went insane doing scales. Um, it, it never varies. They make the same noise when you go up the scale and down the scale. Um, but they're finger dexterity exercises, and they teach you to find chords fairly quickly. Right. Um, and they also, you know, when you have that scale reverberating through your skull at night uh, when you're trying to sleep, <laughs> um, you tend to recognize those fucking chords when you hear them on the radio. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I know exactly what that is. Played it a thousand times. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that like 600 times yesterday. That that's an F chord. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, similar though with um, martial arts. Um. So you know, identifying what is uncomfortable, identifying what is hated by beginners, and then doing more of that than anybody else. Um. Seems to be a, a fairly quick method for growth. Um, it's a sucky method for growth that you hate the entire time that you're doing it, but it's quick. Yeah. Um, well, and I try to find a balance in there as a as a teacher, right? Because 
Um, we've talked about this in different ways, but I'm going to try to merge it all together here. One of the things that I've noticed is, you know, you have somebody come along who's naturally good. I have yet to have a naturally good CLAP person finish. Not one. Um, I've had moderately okay to not so good people succeed. Now, I don't know what that says for all of you, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) the primary difference that I've noticed in that conversation, though, is that the people who have successes along the way, but who work a little bit for what they get, value it. The ones who don't work for it don't value it. And the ones who never have successes quit. Right? Yeah. Either extreme ends up quitting. It's a it's the people kind of in the middle of that scale that are most likely to succeed. If you're completely if, like if it's easy for you, you're gonna get bored. You're not gonna find the challenge in it. We need as people, as humans, to be challenged and to grow, I think. And um, it's been my experience that that is absolutely the facts when it comes to martial arts. Uh, People don't do them just because, oh, yeah, I've always been able to do a 570 kick. We're always trying to find something harder to add to do to work on, you know. And for PSP, since we're not adding kicks and we're not we're not adding so much of the material, it's progressively built into the system, right? You have to use your brain more. You have to figure out how the tool um, leverage works and all that kind of stuff on your own for the most part. And and that little bit of struggle, I think, is a fantastic uh, example of how, in my experience anyway, that people learn best. Um, and, and what makes a good student is the one who sweats. <laughs> yeah. If you don't sweat, it ain't any fun. <laughs> well, you know? and that kind of – that touches on a few experiences I've had personally. When I was a, a kid, I was used to being fairly physically gifted at whatever I tried. And if I tried something that I wasn't physically gifted at, obviously that thing sucked and I didn't need to worry about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember at, at one point I, I – um, I got introduced to basketball. I came from a small southern town where uh, you flip burgers or uh, worked for NASA. And you were gifted for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't do either one. We left before we could figure out which way my career path would take me. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, within that, um, I, there wasn't a, a lot of sports culture. So I was introduced to team sports later on. Um, yeah. You know, when, everybody was talking about hunting and fishing rather than basketball and football and stuff, because when you can be shooting shit and killing shit, why would you chase a, an inflated ball around a field um, <laughs> or a court or whatever? Uh, yeah. It was, it was just kind of weird to everybody who grew up where I grew up. Um, but I remember getting introduced to basketball for the first time and I was playing with a, a friend of mine and his brother and his dad. And I, I was doing fairly well. I mean, I, they, the three of them were playing against me, and I was running them around the court, and I lost the game because it was three against one. And I remember coming inside, and I, I had wrist-slitting depression because I sucked at basketball. You know, this was like <laughs> the first time I'd ever played it. Um, and I just collapsed on the couch, you know, ready to end it all because I, I had found that thing that had beaten me. And my, my mom looked at me, and she said, Try look, scotch. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. Well, <laughs> she, she she looked at me and she said, you know, look out there, and there, all three of the guys that I was playing with were winded and they were sucking air, and I was my biggest problem at that point was not sucking air; it was that I got beat. Um, and it, you know, later on, going into other physical skills, it was kind of finding that okay, you know, I suck at this. I didn't do so well, you know, when I had uh, the spirit test with you. <laughs> you know, yeah. but th- this isn't fun anymore. It hurts. There's bruises. There's blood. You know, uh, my head's ringing. Um, but you have to lower your head and charge forward and kind of grind through 
things when they're not fun anymore. Yeah. And I, I think you have to also figure out how to find the fun in them. You know, like, like, well, because uh, it has been my experience that if it were completely work, you would bail. You know what I mean? You're having fun because you see yourself succeeding as you go along, right? Like, it's not, it's not success today necessarily, but it might be success in two weeks. And, uh, and then when you don't have, um, when you're not comparing yourself to somebody who's better than you and you start to compare yourself to those who are, you're working with, it's like, yeah, yeah, I have improved. You know, I am better at this than I started. And that balance, I think, is what most people need anyway. Well, and uh, Unless they're just stubborn. Yeah. I, I don't know. For me, it's probably as, as much about being stubborn and Irish. looking. <laughs> What's that? Irish. Yeah. <laughs> well, stubborn, Irish, drunk, you know, these are all synonyms for the same damn thing. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I look at it, I, I study martial arts, I shoot, I, um, for the same reasons that I, I work really hard. Um, yeah. You know, it's, um, it's important to me to be able to provide for my family and discharge what I see as my duty as a man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, okay, it was fun choking somebody out last week, and this week I got choked out myself, and that wasn't so fun. <laughs> whether or not I'm enjoying myself while doing this doesn't have any bearing on whether or not I'm coming back next week. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the same thing with a, a job. You know, it, it's spelled J-O-B, not F-U-N. Um, I, I, I do it so that the lights stay on and the roof stays over our head and we don't have, you know, nice people coming to evict us and, and tell us we have to leave now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, there's hundred percent that whole concept of, um, you know, I don't think any, I don't think any of the, I don't think ever any of the training is necessarily fun, <laughs> but but the payoff is fun. You know what I mean? When I, when you have that success, uh, uh, when you're banging with somebody and you go, eh, yeah, that worked. That's totally awesome. That's where, to me, that payoff comes from. And it may not be, like, fun in the sense of, yay, but um, you can see the reward at least. I, I, you know, I went to the gym this morning before doing this, and uh, – uh, the no, the work I did there was fantastic. I mean, I did battling ropes. I did four sets of battling ropes in between everything else that I did, and then heavy bag work and practiced on um, wall training for martial arts stuff. And it all sucked, I promise you. <laughs> but I, but I know what the reward is, and so that's what keeps me going. Yeah, it it. it to me it's interesting just to see the different motivations you know my fun will come and my fun will go yeah um you know using the, the choking analogy um i got to hit my roommate in the face a couple of weeks ago um a lot of fun really really <laughs> enjoyable uh love to start that day at, that um start out Is that way now? I, I hope so um <laughs> so but you know i'd love to start out that way every day um, after that, he got to choke me out. Not yeah. as fun. Um, yeah. but Nelson, yeah, whack, whack. yeah. Uh, oh, this yeah. isn't going to end well, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, kind of looking at that, um, like I said, it doesn't affect whether or not I come next week. I, I have a, a place and a goal for PSP and where it fits for me. Right. And that, I, I think that, it's interesting. That's an important. What's that? I was going to say that's an important component. I think you know is sort of to me. You know the reason I wrote the manifesto, which I've shared you know on Facebook in various ways with different uh, groups and stuff. But the manifesto to me is sort of like these are my goals, right? This is what I'm trying to accomplish with PSP for myself, as much as for everybody else, um, and. And having that written down has been really a fantastic piece for me. I think 
you know, if you're capable of defining your goals and never wavering from them, never forgetting them, that you are far more likely to succeed. I mean, that's a fact. We all know this, but um, actually doing it is a, is a different deal, you know, to say, oh, I want to be able to protect myself is one sort of vague goal, right? But really, I think it's important, and you probably have done this somewhere along the way, to define what the hell that means. Yeah. What does protect myself mean? Because I don't, I don't think unless you do that, you really are going to succeed, right? Because it's sort of like shooting the side of a barn. Ah, I hit the barn. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, do anything to, you know, freaking hit something that's 40 feet by 80 feet, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, so I, I think having a smaller target, uh, so to speak, you know, you're going to be more successful with approaching it, reaching it. Well, and, you know, to me, it, it's it's tactical and strategic goals. Yeah. You know, a tactical goal is I need to learn this stream this alles, whatever, you yeah. know, that, that's something I can touch. It's something I can feel. Yeah. Strategic goal is why am I doing this? Well, if I can't protect myself, then everything I earn is pretty much up for grabs for whoever comes by. Right. So it, it's, it's more or less worthless. Like, you know, if I'm out at a restaurant and somebody feels like grabbing my girlfriend's boob, um, and I can't do anything about that, you know, <laughs> that's, what's what's the point of all, of everything you know yeah, yeah. um th- my roommate you know once again he went out um recently to our one of our party districts uh south tampa and there was an altercation uh mild altercation a, a disagreement um more or less but he had um he ended up having to call a guy out on some inappropriate behavior and the guy leaned over to him and said dude please don't fight me i don't know how to fight Perfect. Uh, I, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I could never imagine admitting that to somebody else. Yeah. You know, like, I, yeah. hey, I, I can't stand up for myself, so I'm going to throw myself on your mercy and just ho- hope that you're a really nice guy. Yeah. Um, you, you know, that's that's where this all fits in for me, at least. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. And I think I think, you know, for myself – Personally, one of the things has always been, and it sounds like you're saying the same thing, but I've identified it more as this, uh, um, I like to be self-reliant because I know for a damn fact that I'm the only one I can count on. (laughs) Not because I don't have people in my life who are able to be counted on, but I know for a fact I can always count on myself to do what I need to do for me, and I can't always count on anybody else to be there for me. I have yeah. to own my shit. I have to own my shit, whatever that looks like, the good and the bad, and I have to um, be able to deal with it. So, Well, and it's, I think it's keeping that perspective, you know, bringing this back in for a landing that, that makes a good student. You know, when we're looking at, You know, getting punched in the face sucks, but it'll go away. Punching somebody in the face is awesome, but that feeling, too, will go away. Um, It's not going to keep you any warmer while you're getting punched in the face. Yeah. Even if you die, the feeling goes away. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Once the teeth are cemented back in their sockets, (laughs) either with a dentist or without one, whatever. Um, (laughs) But, you know, looking at that – it's like where does where does all of this fit for you? And I think that that's an important question that everybody has to ask themselves early on, and you have to have a satisfactory answer to. Otherwise, yeah. you'll just you'll flake. You know, I mean, how many people have we looked at over the years um, that I, I've met? You know, once or twice, and oh, where's so and so? Oh, they're not training anymore. Yeah. Why? Well, you know, they got tired of it. It's a long drive. Their herpes was flaring up. Whatever the answer is, yeah. right? It all boils down to they're not here. Yeah, I you know it's funny to me because um, you know um, as well because you've kind of been in this yourself. I <laughs> often get people who come back, uh, you know, a year, two years, three years, four years later, um, 
I have a guy who constantly is trying to get me to teach him somehow magically, uh, who makes no effort to actually do any of the options that I give him. Um, but he's, oh, you're the best teacher I had, and I just wish we were well, training. And, well, don't wish, just do. <laughs> like, really, like that's as simple as that. You know, don't threaten me, just do it. And and uh, he never does, you know. And that's the that's one of the huge things for students is, uh, as a learner, you need to do what you need to do. I, I can't make you, through osmosis, learn. So you have to do the work. <laughs> You have to show up. You know, one of the major skills I tell my girls when they're going to school is showing up and then showing up on time is the second one. <laughs> right? Like those are primary skills in life. You will definitely not have a job if you cannot do those two things. So if you can't do those two things uh, for a class that you think is going to somehow improve your life or save your life, you know, really? Like who – why are you even wasting anybody's time? Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, could, I could go off on a tangent there. I won't. Well, and I mean, there's a bunch of tangents to go off on, but they're probably best served being saved for another uh, episode. Um, I will say, I will say, from a student's thing, there's a couple of things that I wanted to just touch on briefly. I don't really know how long this has been, so I don't want to go too long. But, but one of the things you know we talked about is what makes a good student and um one of the things i will say is a huge thing is that when you're training and you come across that thing and there will be things that you are not sure about that you're not comfortable with that you don't understand that you don't have context for whatever the hell it is it is absolutely your responsibility as a student to ask me about it I cannot I cannot guide you without knowing what the hell your issue is. Um don't come to me and go, "Oh yeah, I've been sparring and you know, I don't I don't know how to succeed at sparring." Well, dude, why are you sparring? Like what is your what is your point in sparring? Are you learning timing or are you trying to kill each other? If you're not trying to kill each other, PSP doesn't really apply too well. You know? I mean, that's yeah. a fact. We're not doing a tag game. So if you're playing a tag game with somebody who's really good at a tag game, you're probably going to lose. You know, what are you doing to draw them in? I, the questions are abundant in that conversation. So we have to have the conversation is a big thing. Anytime you're going, I don't think this works. That doubt is a is a catalyst for failure under pressure. Right. So you have to figure out how to remove doubt. And in PSP, what I find actually works best is adding pressure. Once you add pressure, some of that doubt goes away because you find, oh, it it does actually work under pressure better than I ever imagined, you know. Well, you don't have the time to doubt yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to figure out how to apply it and figure out the mechanics and put yourself in the right positions and whatever. Anyway, so that's a big thing. Uh, Another thing is knowing um, when you come across those things that you're like, man, I would never do that in the street. Obviously this is going to come up at least once in every system. I I would think it's going to happen multiple times. I don't know if I would do that. Whatever. Cool. Again, that's a doubt thing, right? So what you need to do is you need to express that doubt. Um, I would, I'm going to challenge you to keep practicing it until you, uh, figure it out before you determine whether or not it's useful for you, right? Now, the difficulty as a student is to say, okay, I'm just going to go through the motions because Guru said I should do it even though I don't really trust it, right? The difficulty is actually still putting your intent and effort into it to trust it, right? You have to trust the process sometimes even if even if the material doesn't always make sense. And uh, that is hard. That is a really difficult thing. And then, you know, after some time, you can then say, I probably don't want to do this still. It doesn't work for me mechanically. I'm, I'm capable of doing it, but it's not, it's not who I am, 
right? This doesn't mean you, you know, don't ever do it again. It just means that it's a, uh, you know, it's like I'm not super awesome at dropping to the ground and going into harm out. I continue to try to improve that and find ways to do that better. And I'm never going to stop trying to improve that. But I'm probably still not going to do it. I just know the value of it, right? Mm -hmm. I know the value of it because I trained it for a long time, even if it's not my personal bent, right? So I'm going to continue to share it with people and teach people because I know that there are people out there like Bill who love that and he's good at it, you know, and he will only get better at it. Well, that ain't me. I'm, I, I'm honest about that. I'm not good at everything that PSP offers. I'm, well, maybe I'm good. I'm not great at everything PSP offers. So, you know, that's a, that's one of those student areas that's a little bit tough. We've had that conversation, you know, like when you're looking at something, how do you determine its value? Well, I don't, I don't think you do it through looking. I think you do it through sweat. Um, those are good points and probably uh, something to be added to the manifesto if there are, aren't already uh, things touching on there. Yeah. So. No, no touching. <laughs> Bad touch. Bad touching. All right. Well, I've got a, a workman over here, so we'll probably bring this one in for a landing and uh, get ready for the next one maybe a little, uh, a little bit later this week. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for your time, Guru, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in. All right. So that should be number one. Sorry, I, I had a workman. Uh, I heard it banging around. I was show. like, what? Oh, yeah, like, there's... You getting laid over there? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, fortunately, I can't do that. And uh, that and uh, that and. Uh... Thanks for listening to another episode of Stepping from Stone to Stone. To find out more about us, please visit us online at clot.us, that's S-I-L-A-T dot U-S, or combat-clot.net. You can also find us on YouTube at clotjunkie1, or you can find us on Facebook by simply searching for Pinjak Silat Pertemporon. Thanks again for listening to another episode of Stepping from Stone to Stone.